Chapter Twenty Four: Size of the Family. There are parents who, without consideration as to whether or not they can do justice to a large family, fill their houses with these helpless little beings who are wholly dependent upon their parents for care and instruction. This is a grievous wrong. Not only to the mother, but to her children, and to society. Parents should always bear in mind the future good of their children. They should not be compelled to devote every hour to taxing labor in order to provide for the necessities of life. Before increasing their family, they should take into consideration whether God would be glorified or dishonored. By their bringing children into the world, they should seek to glorify God by their union from the first, and during every year of their married life. In view of the responsibility that devolves upon parents, it should be carefully considered whether it is best to bring children into the family. Has the mother sufficient strength to care for her children? And can the father give such advantages as will rightly mold and educate the child? How little is the destiny of the child considered? The gratification of passion is the only thought, and burdens are placed upon the wife and mother, which undermine her vitality and paralyze her spiritual power. In broken health, and with discouraged spirits. She finds herself surrounded by a little flock, whom she cannot care for as she should. Lacking the instruction they should have, they grow up to dishonor God and to communicate to others the evil of their own natures. And thus, an army is raised up, whom Satan manages as he pleases. God would have parents act as rational beings and live in such a manner that each child may be properly educated, that the mother may have strength and time to employ her mental powers in disciplining her little ones for the society of the angels. She should have courage to act nobly her part, and to do her work in the fear and love of God, that her children may prove a blessing to the family and to society. The husband and father should consider all these things, lest the wife and mother of his children be overtaxed and thus overwhelmed with despondency. He should see to it that the mother of his children is not placed in a position where she cannot possibly do justice to her numerous little ones, so that they have to come up without proper training. Parents should not increase their families any faster. Then they know that their children can be well cared for and educated. A child in the mother's arms from year to year is a great injustice to her. It lessens and often destroys social enjoyment and increases domestic wretchedness. It robs their children of that care, education, and happiness which parents should feel it their duty to bestow upon them. Counsel to parents of a large family. The question to be settled by you is: Am I raising a family of children to strengthen the influence and swell the ranks of the powers of darkness, or am I bringing up children for Christ? If you do not govern your children and mold their characters to meet the requirements of God. Then the fewer children there are to suffer from your defective training, the better it will be for you, their parents, and the better it will be for society. Unless children can be trained and disciplined from their babyhood by a wise and judicious mother, who is conscientious and intelligent, and who rules her household in the fear of the Lord, molding and shaping their characters to meet the standard of righteousness, it is a sin to increase your family. God has given you reason, and He requires you to use it. Fathers and mothers, when you know that you are deficient in a knowledge of how to train your children for the Master, why do you not learn your lessons? 
Why do you continue to bring children into the world to swell the numbers in Satan's ranks? Is God pleased with this showing? When you see that a large family will severely tax your resources, when you see that it is giving the mother her hands full of children, and that she has not time intervening between their births to do the work every mother needs to do, why do you not consider the sure result? Every child draws upon the vitality of the mother, and when fathers and mothers do not use their reason in this matter, what chance is given to parents or children to be properly disciplined? The Lord calls upon parents to consider this matter in the light of future eternal realities. Economic Considerations Parents should calmly consider what provision can be made for their children. They have no right to bring children into the world to be a burden to others. Have they a business that they can rely upon to sustain a family so that they need not become a burden to others? If they have not, they commit a crime in bringing children into the world to suffer for want of proper food, care, and clothing. Those who are seriously deficient in business tact and who are the least qualified to get along in the world generally fill their houses with children while men who have ability to acquire property generally have no more children than they can well provide for. Those who are not qualified to take care of themselves should not have children. How perplexity is sometimes brought to the church. Many who can but barely live when they are single choose to marry and raise a family when they know they have nothing with which to support them. And worse than this, they have no family government. Their whole course in their family is marked with their loose, slack habits. They have but little control over themselves and are passionate, impatient, and fretful. When such embrace the message, they feel that they are entitled to assistance from their more wealthy brethren. And if their expectations are not met, they complain of the church and accuse them of not living out their faith. Who must be the sufferers in this case? Must the cause of God be sapped and the treasury in different places exhausted to take care of these large families of poor? No. The parents must be the sufferers. They will not, as a general thing, suffer any greater lack after they embrace the Sabbath than they did before. How missionary service may be restricted. In sending missionaries to distant countries, those men should be selected who know how to economize, who have not large families, and who, realizing the shortness of time, and the great work to be accomplished, will not fill their hands and houses with children, but will keep themselves as free as possible from everything that will divert their minds from their one great work. The wife, if devoted and left free to do so, can, by standing by the side of her husband, accomplish as much as he. God has blessed woman with talents to be used to his glory in bringing many sons and daughters to God. But many who might be efficient laborers are kept at home to care for their little ones. We want missionaries who are missionaries in the fullest sense of the word, who will put aside selfish considerations and let the cause of God come first, and who, working with an eye single to his glory, will keep themselves as minute men to go where he shall bid and to work in any capacity to spread the knowledge of the truth. Men who have wives that love and fear God and that can help them in the work are needed in the missionary field. Many who have families go out to labor, but they do not give themselves entirely to the work. Their minds are divided. Wife and children draw them from their labor and often keep them out of the fields that they might enter, were it not that they think they must be near their home.